Hello guys and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a vertical turbine out of a soda can. It will be a tri-blade turbine and a skewed turbine. We'll need a soda can, a medication box, and it should be a square one, a marker, better be non-erasable, a ruler, some rubber bands, and a cover. And this wooden stick will act as a shaft for the turbine. First we start with the can. When you open it, drink it with a straw and do not remove the whole hole. Now we will break away this handle and leave a very small hole at the top. just like that and keep it, do not throw it away now we get the box and the rubber band, put one rubber band now we use a marker to put marks on the four sides Here's one, two, three, and four. Later we will use this rubber band to determine the center of the bottom of the can. Here it has the four marks. Next step we will open this box and make it only three sides. We will remove one side. It is glued at one side so we will just undo the glue and bend one side to the inside so we have a triangle. Now we put another rubber band and do the whole drill again but now we will have three marks this rubber band we will use to determine the blade span like so Now we get the can and we use the one with the three marks. We'll put it on the tip of the cylindrical part. Now we will transfer the three marks to the can. Now we have three marks. Now we remove the band. Make sure the marks are very visible because they are very important. Now we will use the opening handle to make another mark to the right of the marks we did. You see, we put one side on this opening handle and you make the mark on the other side, like so. And we will repeat it three times to make three marks. Here is one and here is a new mark. Then we will use this ruler to transfer the new mark to the bottom side of the can. You stand the ruler and the can upright on the table and we will draw a line from this second remark all the way to the bottom.
This will be the skewing axis for the blade. You have the axis and the original marks are on its left. Now we should have made three axes. You see, here is an axis. And here is a second one. And a third one. All starting from this mark we made with the opening handle to the right of the ones we made with the rubber band. Now we will use the opening handle again, but this time on the bottom side. You will make another new mark to the right of the axis on the bottom side. So the axis will have one mark to the left on the top and one mark to the right on the bottom. Just hold it against the can and make the new mark. So we now have three axes and each axis has one mark at the top and one mark at the bottom. Now we have all the axes and all the marks. Each one has two marks. Now we will get one rubber band and we will join one mark at the top and the nearest mark on the bottom such that it does not cross the axis. So it will be with the one with the axis before it. You see? It does not cross the axis. And we will take the marking pen and we will mark the position of this line here. And we will repeat for all the three sides. Now we have the can. We have one axis here. And skewed line before. And skewed line after. Of course the total should be three skewed lines. What we will cut is the skewed lines. and the tops, but only leaving a very small piece at the end of the axis. I am quite sure you guys need to understand why we did what we did. Here is our can, but made in a planner view. Just like you open it and spread it like a sheet. The three marks marked 1, 2 and 3 are the ones we made with the rubber band at the beginning. Of course, uh, the number one is showing two times because it is going all around, but it is the same position. Uh, the opening handle is the one made in blue color, and we used it to make the red axis right to it. I use this item particularly because it is one third the length of the span of the blade. Here we can see the three blades are the ones marked in cyan and the one in the middle marked in white. Now, this, uh, the position one, we put the axis to the right of it and the position one dash to the bottom is to the right of the axis. So one is to the left of the axis and one dash to the right. The same we do with two and three. We have two and two dash, three and three dash. Now to determine the line, the skewed line, which is the range of the wingspan, we join one dash to two, which is the nearest point that does not cross any axis. And we join one with three dash and three with two dash. Of course, these uh, two black arrows at the top show you that this thing is going all around. Now guys, we have done the cutting. You see, I have cut, we have the axis and I have cut all the skewed sides. And I have left only a small part at the bottom so we can rotate. Now you have the 
blade, you push one part to the inside and one part to the outside. We do it again. One part to the inside and the other to the outside. Of course, if you are going to push all the right parts to the inside and all the left to the outside, or the other way around if you want, but they should be all similar. Try not to hurt yourself because these edges when cut are very sharp. Now we have it. Almost done. You can look at the bottom or the top and see if it is symmetrical. Yeah. Now it's time for putting the shaft. On the top it is easy because this opening is at the center, but at the bottom we have no opening, we have to determine. So we will get to the rubber band with the four marks. The four marks, yeah, and we will transfer the four marks to the bottom. Of course I should have done this before, before I did the cutting, but I didn't want to confuse you. We will make the four marks and we will join them with lines so the intersection will be the center of this circle. Here we go, we put the four marks. One, two, and three, four, we gotta do it again. Of course, if the can was not cut, it would be easier. Here we have four marks. We will join each two opposite lines with the ruler. Now we have two intersecting lines and they intersect at the center we need to punch through. Now if you have anything sharp maybe you can use this thing but if it does not help maybe you can use uh, anything that can pierce the iron. Of course it's better to do it before we do the cutting because it makes the steel weaker. Now I have fixed the axis and our turbine is done. We made the hole and we make the shaft through and we put it through the hole on the top as well and we can use glue to fix it. Here one side was cut so I used glue to fix it. A little blow and it rotates. Blow. Now our turbine is done, but I'll show you one more thing. This is an electric cassette motor. If we can fit the shafts together, we can make it a generator. Now I have fit our turbine with the motor. You see a rotation will create a voltage here. I joined the shafts in a very simple way. Of course, the motor shaft is very thin so I had to thicken it with uh, insulating tape, electrical insulating tape and then I coupled it with our shaft using drinking straws. You see as this thing rotates it will create a lot of voltage but it will not exceed 1.5 volts maximum so it doesn't have a very good application but you may use it for uh, maybe a small lead lamp. A guy made it with a 200 liter barrel I hope you enjoyed the video my friends and have a nice day.